honestly, I think one of the best ways to really learn about a place and to like really dive into a location that you're at is to try all the foods that you possibly can. Whoa, dude! I've never seen anything like this. There's not a single foreigner here. Oh my god. Yeah. John. Good evening. We Good start evening. Uh, at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. because we're gonna explore the food at night in Korea, in Seoul. So tonight we're gonna try out a bunch of different foods and we are actually with a bunch of different people. Okay, so this is first market to be open every day and it still is today. So seven days a week, 365 days of the year. Uh, it is also the first all you can find market. So this is where you can find anything from silk, bedding, clothes, groceries, and obviously food. Actually, this one is so unique, full of like the line of a uh, street store in the middle and then you can walk on the side. I think I really love it. You can eat on the rainy day too. It's crazy, the whole main strip and center strip of this is called Pancake Alley. And they just make these really famous pancakes. That's all pancakes. you see though. <laughs> yeah, it's all you see. Um, here at this market, they mostly specialize in the mung bean. Uh, pancake, which is like not something that I that typically you can find all around Seoul. Come to this market, you will find one of the base mung bean. What's that called? Pancake. pancake. Like some people call this as a consider this as a Korean pizza, rather than pancake. Woo! This lady was actually on Netflix, and she was on Netflix because of her food. So she specializes in dumplings, whether it be uh, kimchi dumplings or pork dumplings. But she's the only one in the entire market that stays open from open to close and past close. So most people come in at 8 and then they'll leave early, the owners of the stalls, and then their part-time work will come in and take care of it and handle the rest until close. Mm -hmm. She comes in at 8 o'clock in the morning, every morning, doesn't leave until 11, and by the time she cleans up, she actually leaves here at around 12, and then she has to go home, make the dough, and come back the next morning. And every single day, all day, she's always here. Dude, and you know what is cool about this place? Is that like, even though Netflix come on, the price doesn't change, and she is still the same. Uh, so you don't want to shake it because it's carbonated, so as long as you don't want it all of yourself, it's better to uh, roll it. And typically, a lot of Korean girls will actually uh, not roll it, uh, I should not shake it and they'll actually uh, pour out the clear liquid and the stuff that settled to the bottom. Uh, they'll actually apply it to their face because apparently it makes your face glow. Uh, so you guys can try this when you guys go back to the hotel, uh, make your face glow, get drunk, all for $1.20. So, uh, but yeah. All right. So, John. 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 I'm really like get inspired right now and I think I would name my dog Kimchi. Ooh, that's this kimchi is actually spicy. It is? It's really good, but it's the first kimchi I've had that's like actually spicy. Come on, Jimmy. I see the chili on your tongue. It doesn't mean it's spicy. But anyway, this is one thing I love about Korean food. Always come up with the kimchi and come up with the side dish, whatever. The main thing is kimchi. This one I never try it. It's like greens. Green pickle, 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 or oh, they got chili as well. Let me try. I, I'd probably be spicy with you, but... Uh, Let's see. I'm okay right now. Okay. Oh, the sour. We sit exactly like right in front of me is where she cooked. So it's just a good view. Yeah. We started over here. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. You guys all get one each, so... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just pass those around if you can. So Kimchi. this is called mandu. Are you curious? Kimchi mandu. It's basically a kimchi dumpling. Galleon, grass noodle, and of course, kimchi. I don't think I've ever had a kimchi dumpling. <laughs> you never had I've kimchi never dumpling, had kimchi yeah. Dumpling. Mm, absolutely the name. How about you try? Korean chopsticks are the hardest chopsticks <laughs> in the world. Why would you make metal chopsticks? It's so hard. How do you like a kimchi dumpling? That's really good. 
They pair really well together. Because you have crunchy kimchi and you have steamed kimchi. It's really, really good. I see that. So it's gonna be my first time trying soup tebi. Uh, I need a spoon actually. So, oh guys, let's try the soup first. I used to take Sundays off. And then a random day oh. when I when I'm this is my hangover break. kind of food. So, huh? Hangover kind of food. Yeah, yeah, this is my hangover kind of food. Clear broth. Um, I don't know what is uh, this. I'm I trying. do later. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is that like I used to go one. It's the same thing she used good. to make dumpling, so guys. It, then I'll just get sick ah, of it. I think the seaweed is a main ingredient in making it very flavorful. Yeah, exactly. But Jimmy doesn't like seaweed, so <laughs> I love seaweed. I'm a big fan of seaweed, and Korean loves seaweed too. Some people even use the dry seaweed on top of their rice and just eat it straight. Some of my friends do that. Uh, you guys can also sample whatever you guys want for free. Uh, there's little toothpicks right here. Just get a new toothpick whenever you guys sample something new. Um, and there's a garbage can in the front right here. So I'll explain a few of the dishes over here. Uh, we have the uh, baby soft shell crabs. And so uh, these, uh, it looks spicy, but it's actually not spicy at all. Uh, we have the pickled garlic, uh, Korean chili peppers, lotus roots, peanuts, black beans. Do you love me now? And these, you guys can take a little pinch if you guys want to taste it. Uh, one of the most common uh, side dishes that we have here in Korea. Uh, almost every household has it. Uh, it's actually sweet, it's actually not salty at all. Um, Baby and Joey, guys, look at it. <laughs> Very good. It's really good. It's really easy to eat. Dude, they have Try. even live squid. Spicy? Yeah. Sour and spicy. They even pickle the crab. Yeah. This is part of their culture. People in the past don't have refrigerator, so they pickle everything, even crab. Oh. <laughs> this is gonna be so good with beer. Done. Quite interesting. That place is another one of those places that just allows you to go up and try something. So if you really seem interested in something and it looks really good, you should definitely try it and just ask them for a sample. If you do really, really like it, of course, get one. Uh, and we, if we ask for more broth, uh, they'll give it to us for free because uh, they know that we're going to order more soju. So it's a vicious cycle. Uh, we don't know which one will finish first before we die, basically. Whenever you open a bottle of soju, uh, so <laughs> whenever you open a bottle of soju, um, you always want to shake it. So then you get. Uh, I totally failed on that, sorry. Are you Korean? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, like that. Right, so you get the tornado. Uh, so the reason why you do this is because a long time ago the switch making process was very dirty. Uh, so there's a bunch of sediments on the bottom, um, and then uh, basically do the tornado, go to the top, and then you uh, flick it out like this. And so um, obviously now the switch making process is very clean, so you don't have to do this. Uh, but, the young, but the younger generation says that if you do this, it'll prevent hangovers. Yeah, that's what we do. So we are going to try the live squid. Literally like you still see it like moving. This is the one dish that if you don't eat it fast It'll literally run from you It'll just swim away. So it comes with Sesame oil, I guess this is salt on the bottom water, water cups right here. And it comes with soup. I believe this is radish Here you go. Radish? Daikon. Huh? Daikon. What does it mean in English? Same thing. And then uh, we have the baby greens and then uh, we also have the uh, Korean pear. Uh, so the Korean pear is a little bit different than the uh, like the regular Anju pear, uh, pears like in America, uh, where these pears are a little bit less sweeter and uh, it has a little bit more crunch to it. So whenever you take a bite, uh, always try to get a little bit of pear uh, with each bite. Uh, that way, she's stuck in. All right, never mind. I don't like the texture. I'm a big texture person and I'm not a fan of it. So I don't think I'll try this one. I think I'll pass on this one. We'll let Todd take the lead on this one. Guys, so good to know. It will move for about 20 to 25 minutes only. When you touch it, it starts to move. Yeah. I mean, but see guys. Don't really help. It's like impossible. Oh. Oh. 
so hard to grab. So it was raw squid and raw beef with a, a Korean pear, which is quite different than the US pear. It's like a little bit less sweet, a little bit more crunchy, but supposedly it's really good. Dude, to be honest, I love the textures a lot. You like it a lot? Mm-hmm. And what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna teach you guys a Korean Korean rule, because everybody messes up the rules, even the people that know the rules. Um, so um, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna pass it around, everybody gets one flick. Um, and then we're gonna keep on passing it around until somebody knocks it off. So, so say if I knock it off, and the people on both sides have to drink. Uh, if you miss it, you have to take a shot. If you miss it and you go for it a second time, you take two shots. Um, and so if I knocked it off, uh, people on both sides have to drink. <laughs> I always let everybody try everything first. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. That mustard's really good. Larry? <laughs> Whoa. It's really good with the mustard, right? Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. Mm. I, I mean, they have these everywhere, the rice cakes. They are all over Korea. All over every street stand, you'll see it. Tteokbokki. Tteokbokki. It's really good, but the mustard is like why I would come here. I would come here specifically to get the mustard because I think it's actually way better with the mustard than it is without the mustard. We were talking about how in Korea it's really, really safe and everything is under CCTV. So like even the bars, the restaurants, you know, the markets, everything has cameras everywhere. And Ta was explaining how like, you know, even in college when she would stay at a coffee shop and work, actually people would come in off the street, plug in their phone, they would leave the phone there for like three or four hours and then come back randomly and pick up the phone and the phone is still there in the same exact location. Uh, you can also get a juice box of soju as well. Uh, you walk around, walk around like a little kid, stick a little straw in it, get drunk like a kid, and yeah. Uh, so the reason why I'm basically telling you guys about this is because uh, we're gonna walk for about 30 minutes, and if you guys wanna uh, get a drink, there's no open container law here in Korea, uh, so you guys can get a beer or a juice box of soju. It's all up to you guys. All the good places are in these little alleys. And a lot of tourists and foreigners are very uh, intimidated or very scared to actually uh, go into these little dark alleys in a country that they don't know. Uh, but it's actually one of the safest countries in the world. But if you don't know how to order on the menu and you can't read it, he said that most of the main dishes that that restaurant specializes in is going to be the first dish on the top left of the menu. Not all the cases, but in most cases, it's going to be the top left. Whoa! Dude! This reminds me of Hanoi, Vietnam. Yeah, and the fact that there's just like a, this is supposed to be just a drinking hole of people that don't really know about it. He said there's zero foreigners here and tourists unless they got lost. There's no restaurants around here. There's no bars around here. It's strictly just these places. So if you are a foreigner here, you're either an expat that your local friend told you about or you're just lost. And he's pretty much right because I don't see any foreigners here. Uh -huh. Oh my god! You may have to wait an awfully long time here to get a table. So. The main thing that most people usually order here is garlic fried chicken. So uh, there's tons of minced garlic on it, uh, but it's, it's not very garlicky. It's actually quite sweet. Uh, so it's actually quite good. So if you guys want, you guys can also do like half uh, garlic fried chicken and half regular fried chicken. So you can taste a little bit of both. And if you like the sauce, you can also always dip into the sauce as well. Garlic chicken and dried fish is what this place is really well known for. I love fish, I love chicken. Garlic chicken, beer, and dried fish. So if you don't know what part of the fish you can eat, you can't. Why? I you eat... have to break it apart. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? I eat everything. I really like that. Very good with beer. Very good. With beer, especially. Yeah, it's very good with beer. Oh man, good choice. Better than fresh fish. In this instance, with beer. Man, it'll be so cool to have all things like um, the previous one that we eat, which is like a raw squid. 
with meat. That one is also very good in beer. This one is also very good in beer. Everything is good in beer. Call me up. Oh, I am alcoholic. Everything is just so good in beer. Oh my god, look at that garlic. Oh my god, it smells when so good. When you put it, this is what I love about Croatia. Remember the first place that we went? We eat the uh, dumpling with kimchi. So this one decided to change. They don't give you kimchi anymore, but they give you this um, radish. And then this one is so good with chicken. They serve it with a side of radish because Koreans aren't really good at eating fried things. Like so, it, it cuts all the grease. All right, guys, I'm trying the chicken garlic right now. Sweet. I've never seen garlic fried chicken with this much garlic on it. It is literally layered in garlic, but I love garlic. Oh, it's so good. That's the best fried chicken I've ever had in Korea. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh my god, they have uh, mayonnaise and chili sauce. Like, that's the biggest one right here. That goes great with the fish. The matta says. And the chicken. And it is incredible. It's spicy, but it's like super thick. Oh, it's so good. It's like salt and garlic. Oh, salt and pepper. You dip it, you eat it together with the radish. It's so good. Chicken gizzards, but it's actually the chicken asshole. Um, so it's a uh, so it's a muscle. Um, so it's uh, a little bit crunchy in texture, and you get sautéed with um, uh, sesame oil and uh, uh, garlic stems. Uh, for the alcohol, if you guys are okay with it, uh, I was gonna make you guys some uh, somek, which is a soju and beer combination. Thank you, sir. Night. Yeah. Yeah. John. Yeah. It's crazy. This this like street cart brings you free mussels and free cucumbers, and you can eat as many as you want, and that's free. That's that's crazy. All the foods that basically help you to obey. But, yeah. um, Dude, I can't believe yeah. they're giving it for free. It's so expensive <laughs> in Thailand. Yeah. So eager. I mean, mussels in the U.S. are really expensive as well. Nobody's gonna give you for free. The water right back. Yeah. Woo! Kimchi John. Uh, the kimchi pancakes. Kimchi pancakes. Uh, there's tons of places that do it, uh, but there's a ton of places that do it very poorly. Uh, but uh, he, but she does it really, really well. Uh, so it's really good. I don't think I've ever had a kimchi pancake. You need a sauce. Please. Sauce is good. Please try. You didn't listen yeah, to yeah. what I said earlier, did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I said don't use like one hand. There we go. You need to dip the sauce. I forgot. I did last time. Dude, that's the rule. I don't know how Jimmy doesn't like it. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, I think. To me, you are in East Asia, right? You are not in Southeast Asia. Yeah, totally different. Let me show you. What is it? Fish, uh, uh, shell, shellfish, together with, I guess this is an onion and another onion. So this food tour we're on is actually quite different because you just pay for the guide and then you pay for your own food so you know that like he's not upcharging food or that's so true. you know that's like that's actually a really really good thing because then you know you're getting like the fair price and you know what you're paying for the guide specifically and you're not you know just getting charged for everything and then the food being way less and him making way more money i actually kind of like that uh before you know where's the drinking what do you mess up you drink that's really easy that's 
why I said it takes that coordination. That was really so. confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, 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 funny. It's kind of um, picking a lock. I don't know how to say it in English, but it's like it's a fortune telling thing. Yes, 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 yes. What? So, this is so cool. All right, hold this. I want. I want my fortune. <laughs> 